Hi everyone, it's Nico Marillo with Texans for Safe Access and we are going to allow a few people to join before we start up and just be patient with us. I have Dr. Olga waiting to speak with us about COVID and cannabis. So we'll just allow a couple of seconds for more people to join. All right, thank you again for your patience. I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Again, my name is Nico Marillo and I'm the chair of Texans for Safe Access. And I'm so excited to have Dr. Olga, one of our board physicians here with us today to join us and talk to us a little bit about COVID and some of our cannabis questions. So I just wanna thank you all for being here and I wanna take a moment to um, read Dr. Olga's bio. So Dr. Olga is a native Houstonian board certified emergency physician board eligible lifestyle medicine medical coach, practicing cannabinologist and Texas state registered compassionate use doctor. She works with patients across the United States to refine their health with cutting edge lifestyle changes and a tincture of cannabis in legal states. Dr. Olga believes cannabis is an important and promising medical plant and enjoys educating anyone that would listen. So uh, thank y'all, thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Olga, and I'm going to bring you in now. Hi, Dr. Olga. How are you doing? I'm fine. Hi, everybody. Thanks for having me today. Thank you for joining us and thank you for uh, all your work you do for our chapter. And so um, I wanted to spend a little bit of time going over some of these questions that we may have. And I wanted to um, invite our, our guests to also um, put in some questions that they may ask. They want to ask you and we can ask those as we go along and hopefully we can get everything answered and um, we come out of this with more education and knowledge about COVID and, and where we're going to go with this. So, um, Dr. Bef Olga, before I start, is there anything that you would like to say? Um, I just want to say it's a beautiful, beautiful day out here in West Texas and I'm really excited that we're, we're going to start rolling out some uh, live chat so we can get some real real time questions answered. That's awesome. I am too. So thank you so much for uh, joining us again today. So uh, Dr. Olga, can you tell us what exactly is coronavirus? Okay. So coronavirus is um, actually a collection of uh, a family of viruses. The coronavirus we're dealing with now is called SARS-CoV-2. Um, and it is one of the more aggressive strains of coronavirus that we know affects our immune system and primarily the respiratory system. But we've discovered during this um, pandemic that SARS-CoV-2 causes something called COVID-19, which is the collection of, of symptoms that make the disease. And that um, infection can actually affect every single organ of the body, uh, which is why it's such a big deal. Wow, thank you. And so uh, do I need a corona test? Well, um, that's an excellent question. Most medical doctors will say everyone should be able to get a coronavirus test if they have symptoms or if they're concerned about exposure. After all, that's what we do for flu and for strep, for example. But um, because the pandemic happened so quickly, our medical technology has not been able to keep up with the production of the test itself. So the test is two parts. It is the swab, which is like, like a Q-tip, and it goes inside of a test tube, which has solution in it. Those two pieces have to be manufactured from scratch. Not very easy. Um, and then the other part is the actual machine that you run the test in. That also has to be manufactured, and it takes brains to make those things from scratch. Um, and so because of that, 
Um, it takes time to make just one test kit and one test machine. Now, imagine how many we need across the entire globe. Um, and so, and we needed it in a very short period of time. I mean, within a, a matter of um, four weeks, we had discovered that we needed tests for the entire world. Um, and so every country is struggling with having enough tests for all of their citizens. So to answer that question, if you are very sick, um, meaning you need to be uh, admitted to the hospital, you can bet you're gonna get a test. Um, if you're very sick and need to go to the emergency department, but you don't need to be admitted, then the doctor will decide if you should have a test or not based on the availability of the test. If you are not very sick, meaning you don't need to go to the emergency department, um, then a test can possibly be obtained through your private insurance or through cash pay. But it, has, it depends on your region. Um, for example, larger cities like Houston are going to be more likely to have tests for people that just want to test versus um, much smaller cities. So if you think that you need to be admitted to the hospital, if you think you're so sick that you need to go to the ER, most likely you need to have a test. If you don't fit in that category, then you don't really need a test. But if you want one, you may be able to obtain one. Okay. So if you don't qualify for the test, your choices are to pay out of pocket or private insurance, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so what can, um, what can I do or what can my family do to protect themselves from the virus? So what we know about this virus is that it, it heavily affects the immune system and it usually enters in through the open parts of our body. Um, and those are going to be our eyes, our ears, our nose in our mouth. Um, and then it also lives on surfaces. And so any um, surface that it's living on, if it touches those areas, then it can enter into our body. Um, and so what that means is that if the immune system is going to be the primary system to fight the infection, your immune system needs to be very healthy. And so there are lots of natural foods and supplements like my vitamins and minerals that you can take to help fortify or strengthen your immune system. One of the popular ones right now is vitamin C. Um, for an adult, if you start to feel very mild symptoms like runny nose, scratchy throat, you can start taking between 500 and 1,000 milligrams of vitamin C as long as you don't have any contraindications. For children, it's between 250 and 500 milligrams depending on their size. Um, you can also begin to take zinc. Anyone that takes zinc needs to have the direction of a doctor. Um, but generally for adults, the uh, milligram dose is about 400 milligrams and you only take it during the time that you feel ill. Um, also, you can start taking citrus fruits, berries like blackberries, blueberries, and strawberries if you're not allergic. These are also known to fortify the immune system. Sunlight is actually very important during viral season. Sunlight is important because it helps you maintain a healthy level of vitamin D but it also helps to activate the immune system in a healthy way. Um, you want to stay away from stress. Stress is emotional stress, but it's also lack of sleep. Uh, sleep is when the body de-stresses, but it also is when the immune system is actually its strongest. Um, adults should be getting between seven and nine hours of sleep a night. Now that can be hard if you're a shift worker. And so you can talk to your doctor about how to get um, something called REM sleep. Um, in your short amount of time. Children should be getting anywhere from tw uh, 10 to 12 hours of sleep per night. Wow. Um, and so these are, and, and, and fresh water. These are the best ways to strengthen your immune system. The one thing I have to stress, Nico, is smoking. Smoking will absolutely work against you and smoking of any, almost any sort. Um, because it it uh, affects the lungs and it causes an uh, inflammatory response in the lungs and it weakens the immune system in the lungs, which is how coronavirus gets in. We are encouraging everyone, please, you should stop smoking anyway, but do not smoke during co coronavirus season or COVID season, flu season. Those are the times you really don't want to um, be stressing out your lungs. Perfect. Yeah, because that, that was one of my other questions. Um, can I still use cannabis, uh, marijuana or CBD? Um, during COVID. So you're saying, no, you shouldn't be smoking it, but there's obviously other forms uh, that you can take. So um, what's your what's your thought on that? Now, this is a sticky subject. 
Um, I want everyone to understand that my view on how someone takes marijuana is unbiased. I do not condemn anyone's choices, but I do deliver the facts. I cannot change the way the human body works. The human body does not like charred or combusted smoke. It doesn't. And so even if it's marijuana, you, we may find out when research um, starts to come out that smoking it during a time when you are under attack is not the best idea. Now, for patients who heavily rely on smoking marijuana to treat their various medical conditions, what we are recommending until we have more information from research is to see if you can decrease your dose by down to a tenth or a quarter of what you normally would smoke and then supplement with an alternative um, route. That would be uh, oil or an edible that is not um, high in calories or preservatives, um, suppositories, topicals, and um, those kinds of other routes. Okay, and that includes like um, vaporizer pens and um any type of like tornado, um, any vapor type bags that, that's considered smoking. You're not just talking about combusting a plant material, correct? Correct. Now, vapor, vaporizing, as we know, is a, a lower temperature than smoking. And it also does not burn, um, but it doesn't create that black smoke um, that you get when you burn paper or a substance. Um, so vaporizing is, is uh, controversial also. We do know that um, it can affect your lung lining, which can affect your immune system and the primary barrier to um, invaders. There is a, um, a, a form of, of, of vaporizing. It's not vaporizing. It's called aerosolizing. Um, parents will understand or asthmatics will understand what I mean. They're nebulizer treatments. We don't yet have that widely available for cannabis users, but it does not um, increase the temperature. And it's thought that the temperature um, that changes around the lungs is what might also contribute to decreasing its defenses. So vapor, look, to answer your question, vaporizing, I don't recommend during um, flu or viral season, but it is controversial. We don't know yet about vape. Aerosolizing may be a more safe option if it's available and if it's safe and tested. Perfect. Okay, so um, what if I have co comorbidities like diabetes? Can I protect myself too? Oh, absolutely. So we do know that diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease like congestive heart failure, lung disease like asthma and cystic fibrosis, those all put you at risk for having a really bad infection. What if I have um, the best ways to protect yourself if you have a comorbidity like diabetes or high blood pressure is to keep your diabetes under control. What that means, stay away from foods that are gonna increase your blood sugar. Increase the foods that generally help with maintaining good blood sugar. Make sure that um, you're uh, keeping close contact with your doctor. If your blood sugars are getting out of whack, they're, you're normally used to it being 120s and they're now 200s or 300s. You wanna get in contact with your doctor right away so you guys can talk about controlling your blood sugar and the same with your blood pressure. Okay, perfect. I'm going to text on here, see if we have any questions on our Facebook. Um, okay, so should I be wearing a mask at all times? I think I just saw something about Har um, Harris County putting in a, a mask, mandatory mask, but so it may change from county to county, but assuming that there's no regulation that you have to wear a mask, should you be wearing one? You know, I actually agree with face coverings, and the reason why is because we are social creatures, so we're not really conscious about how much we're aerosolizing when we talk, when we sneeze, those kinds of things. Wearing a face mask actually just protects our fellow neighbor or our family. Um, and so I do agree, and a lot of um, practitioners, nurses, physicians also agree that it may be the best idea for us as um, a society to, to get used to covering our face with a mask where we can still breathe, um, especially during viral season. This pandemic is really, really severe. And whatever we can do to protect ourselves, to protect ourselves from the spread um, of the disease, protect ourselves from getting sick, we are all for, and we are, we're finding that face masks are effective. Okay, thank you. And so what if I have coronavirus right now? Will the infection get worse? 
Oh, that's such a good question. First of all, if you were diagnosed with a positive coronavirus test, I don't want you to be afraid. Instead, I want you to replace that fear with information. So listen to me carefully. If you were diagnosed with coronavirus, there's a few things that I need you to pay attention to. If this happens, you're gonna go straight to the ER or you're gonna call your nearest ER and let them know what's going on. Any age, shortness of breath. I don't care what degree. If it feels like shortness of breath, you need to go to the hospital, you need to get your oxygen status checked, and you may even need to have tests run like chest x-rays, et cetera. Shortness of breath is the biggest one. Okay. Chest pain is the next biggest one. If you are someone who is not used to having chest pain, or if you're someone that has heart conditions, get to the nearest ER if you have chest pain and you have a positive coronavirus test. Um, coughing blood. I don't care if it's coming from your nose because it's not, it's, unless it's a clear nosebleed, if you're coughing blood and your test was positive, you need to go back to the emergency department. They need to uh, recheck you and make sure that you're not progressing. And finally, anyone that is acting funny, talking out of their head, not really all there, and they've had a positive test, straight to the emergency department. They need to be checked again. Anyone else that's had a positive test, if you're not having shortness of breath, if you're not having um, extreme lethargy or confusion, if you're not coughing blood, if you're not having um, chest pain, then you can watch your symptoms. I have been encouraging some of my patients that if you can get a pulse oximeter, that's something that goes on your finger, um, you may be able to get it on Amazon or one of those websites. I would like for you to get one if you got a positive test. So if you start to feel nervous, which all of us are, Put that pulse oximeter on and check it. Anything less than 93% needs to be seen in the emergency department. If you're scared, trust me, every clinic that's open, every ER, every urgent care is okay with you calling. We are taking calls all day long with patients that are concerned, should I come back in? And we walk them through it. It's not even a two minute conversation. So use your, the places that you got diagnosed from or your nearest medical facility to call them with your nervous questions. We are happy to talk to you. We're all, we're all nervous and we're all in this together. Absolutely. So I think you answer my last question. Um, when should I go to the emergency department? You say, if I have chest pains, I'm coughing up blood, or if I have shortness of breath, then I should go to the emergency department. Or um, a little bit of confusion, even in your baby. If they're seeming confused or lethargic, take them to the hospital. Awesome. Well, that's all the questions I have. Um, let me see. I have one question. Um, would the production of PGE2 suppress ACE2 in the, I can't even pronounce this, this name, renin-agastian, renin-angiostinin systems. I can't read that, Dr. Olga. Okay. It sounds like they're asking with the production of PGE2 affect mm -hmm. the- Would it suppress the ACE2 would it system, um, influencing the inhibition of the coronavirus? So um, we don't have to answer that now, but it's it's on our Facebook page and we can follow up on our next week's live Q&A. So, um, cause I can't pronounce that medical term. I'm sure you, you'll come off the tip of your tongue easily, but um, that's all I have today, Dr. Olga. I wanna thank you so much for your time. Um, is there anything else you wanna add before we sign off? No, you guys stay safe, um, take care of each other, stop hoarding and we'll see you guys soon. <laughs> Thank you so much. Be safe and well, too. Thanks again for all of your work with our chapter and uh, have a great weekend. Thanks, Nico. Bye, guys. Bye.